Hello, it's Darren at Moonhair Studio with a Cubase quick tip, fade in and fade out. So a composer friend of mine who's just getting started with Cubase asked quite a sort of valid question is how you do a fade in on a part. Uh, it wasn't really working properly. And I think all of the videos that she was looking at online did exactly this. You'd hover the mouse over the part you grab a triangle on the end and you can create a fade in like that or indeed a fade out by dragging that triangle. You can also click on this square and you can uh, change the overall volume of a part. So if we just um, go back to the beginning of that part now, play it, solo it up, there you can hear it fades in, reaches its volume and then it fades out. So, I mean, that's a, a very straightforward way of getting a, a fairly linear fade in onto your part. But why wouldn't it work? Well, let's have a look at this example up here. So we'll, we'll unsolo all this and go back to here. When I'm hovering my mouse over here, you'll notice that you just aren't getting these triangles or the square at the top. And that's because it's a MIDI part. So it's not an audio file. It's actually MIDI. And you can't use that drag and drop facility on a MIDI part. So you've got a few choices here. The first one would be to render this to audio and then do your fades on the audio. So the easiest way to do that in Cubase would be to go to your edit menu, go down to render in place and then render with current settings and it will create a new track that has your part on it. And this is an audio file and then you will see that you've got the ability to do your fade in. So if we go back to the beginning again, we'll solo that part up and play. And you can hear that that is fading in. But there's no way to do that on a MIDI track. Now you may not want to render to audio. So what would you do in that case? Well, one of the easiest ways would be to use either the mixer itself, which you get to by F3 and you select your, your channel that you're going to be working on, or you can do it just as easily from over here in the inspector. So if we just click down here, we see audio fader. You've got a fader that you can use there. Um, likewise, you can bring up the, the lower zone and you can get to your fader um you know of whatever instrument you want to to look at so but as i say i think the easiest way really is just from over here so you would go back to the beginning of your part you'll click on right automation so that's this w button here and you can find that in various locations so the obvious one is at the bottom of the fader but you see you've also got it on your track there you've got a uh, right automation um, up here um, so, you know, there's there's various places you can get to it that actually sets right for every single track. So it'll include the track that you're working on. But this is very specific. So we'll, we'll click on that one there. And then we'll just drag the fader down to, to zero to start off with. And then all we've got to do is hit play. So um, if we start playing and then we just bring this in, it will fade in. Now what you will see is that it's created an automation lane underneath the part that you've just played and that is the actual level of the volume that it's um, that it's got. So if you if you go back to the start and you play again um, you'll see the fader moving to the level of whatever is here. Now if you wanted to you could actually write this in yourself um, using the pen tool so we're all familiar with the draw tool and that can actually be used just to write a fade in wherever you want it you can do whatever you like with that um, you can have the sort of weirdest fade out ever um, so so that's uh, potentially possible likewise you've got this line tool here and again you can draw in lines and that would be a way to create a very quick and easy um, fade in and then uh, just drag that across for the, the level there. 
The interesting thing with this is if you select the object selection tool, you can now grab hold of this circle in the middle of that line and you can drag that to create a sort of a, like a, a sweeping curve like um, a fade in or, you know, sharp at the beginning and then gradual towards the, the actual top level of volume. So you can drag that around wherever you like. But again, as I say, you know, the draw tool is 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 very useful for all of these sorts of things if you want to be a bit more precise. If you want to draw it in and you don't see an automation lane because all you've got is your track there and you think, I don't want to muck around with the fader, I just want to draw it, then you've got a little down button here on all of those tracks. So just click that and it will bring up usually a blank volume. I'm going to remove that track. I'm going to click down here again and this is what you would see. So it's set it at the volume that your fader is set at but you can just draw straight onto that and do your own automation straight away. So there's several ways to automate the fader. Now the other way to do it would be not to use the actual mixer or the fader to leave that exactly where it is and use the instrument's own volume control. So let's take Spitfire Albion 1 as an example. All the Spitfire libraries have an expression controller and that is basically the volume of the instrument. So it's inside the instrument itself. So if you pull that fader down, then um, it will bring the volume down. So if we just play the track and just bring that down, you can hear the volume goes. Now, again, as we did before, if you wanted to create a fade in, you could then click on your right automation anywhere you like, but uh, on the instruments, just as good as anything. Grab hold of that and let's drag it right down. We'll hit play and then we'll just push it across. And you've got a fade in. And now you can see that it's written an automation lane and it's written uh, under specifically um, the expression of that particular instrument. So Albion One Strings Expression. It's, it's editable in exactly the same way as the volume control was for the fader. Um, you can, uh, you know, you can use your pen tool. You could change this if you, if you didn't like that. You could just uh, create a much sharper um, fade in and you can see that it's controlling the expression up there but if you didn't want to do it like that um, you could program a MIDI controller with uh, CC11 and use the fader on your MIDI controller to control it um, and likewise you could actually create a lane yourself so let's just get rid of this one we'll remove that track and now if you click on the bottom of any of these MIDI tracks, you see show hide automation. So just click on that down arrow and it will default to a volume control. But what you can do then is click on that and then you can choose anything that you want to automate with your pen tool. Now you're not going to find expression straight away. So go into more and let's have a look at Albion One strings and you can see all the different things that you can automate here. Um, from dynamics and vibrato through to the expression. So if we just click on expression and click OK, we now have a blank lane. It's set at the top because your expression controller is at the top, but you can draw your automation in here. And now if we go back and play, it's exactly the same thing. You can see it's controlling the expression fade there from whatever level you've got in your automation lane down here. So several ways to program your automation in um, doing that, you know, either with the right tool by playing through and actually moving physically a fader on your controller or the fader in the instrument itself, or you can just draw it in uh, after the event, um, just create a lane that has the right thing on it you know in this case it's the expression um, in Albion 1 and that will do exactly the same thing for you so many many ways and in fact there are probably several more as well which I haven't covered but uh, you know just have a mess around see which one you prefer 
I mean, I always play these in off a MIDI controller. I like the fact that I can grab a fader and I can just push it around and control these volumes and things. I would say that um, controlling the volume for fades and things inside your instrument is probably quite good because then you've still got the ability to move the actual master fader up and down and get the level of the instrument correct in your mix later on down the line and still have all those fade ins and fade outs coming in underneath. I hope that was helpful. Um, any questions, obviously, in the description below. And uh, I won't, as ever, ask you to subscribe to this channel. But if you want to like and thumbs up, great. Thanks a lot. See you in the next one.